Chuck is so much fun to voice because he has no filter. Um, the speed with which he speaks is a really fun challenge because <laughs> it, it's just an explosion of verbosity. Um, and sometimes it's incredibly challenging to speak that quickly without messing up every other word. Um, but there's also just something wonderfully fun about the zaniness of the character and this idea that even though he's an angry bird, he does have a lot of heart. And he, he really is an unbelievable friend, um, specifically to Red uh, and Bomb. But also in this film, we get to meet a new character, uh, his sister, Silver, played by the brilliant Rachel Bloom. And seeing him uh, with new wrinkles through the prism of these other new characters is also really fun. I was so thrilled um, when I got approached uh, to do the sequel. I said, well, everybody's got to be coming back if I'm going to do it. And without fail, I mean, it was a yes immediately. Uh, they told us the story. They told us exactly what they wanted to do with it. And, you know, me, uh, Jason Sudeikis, Bill Hader, um, Daniel McBride, Danny McBride, uh, everybody from the first film was like, yes, sign me up. And even some of the smaller characters like Maya Rudolph, Tony Hill, uh, without fail, I think pretty much everybody came back. And I think it's a testament to the joy and the fun of the first film, but also to the promise of the sequel. And a lot of times when you're engaging on a sequel, your big thought is it's going to take a lot to live up to the original, if not top it and you want to make sure that you're not signing up for something that just feels like it's lazy in any way or feels like a re retread. And Angry Birds 2, from the, the first time I met on it, I was like, okay, this has potential to be as good if not better. And I think they've really hit it out of the park. The movie, uh, like the first film, does deliver uh, an entire family experience. Um, but beyond, I think, even the first film, there's something so unbelievably funny about this movie that is almost like a laugh a minute. Um, and not to say that it's unexpected in any way, but I think the level at which they hit the ball out of the park in terms of delivering on a promise and a premise that was so unique and different to the original and that the enemies of the first film have to team up and become frenemies, there's so much fertile comedic ground to explore um, out of that premise, and that's exactly what they've delivered on. In this particular case, the characters from the first film, the pigs and the birds, obviously have um, a lot of uh, angst towards each other. The pigs don't trust, uh, the, the birds don't trust the pigs, and obviously have no reason to trust them because the pigs want to take the birds and their island. But in the sequel, what happens is there's a new character named Zeta, played by the brilliant Leslie Jones, who stands as an existential threat to both the pigs and the birds. And so in order for them to fight back, they're gonna need each other's help, and that's exactly what happens. There's something really thematically lovely about this film in, in that idea of unity uh, despite disagreements um, and I think that it, we could all learn to benefit from that um, and and you know there there can be common ground even with those you don't necessarily understand or trust the first the first go around we had an insane cast um, uh, one of those casts it's just like every single character was played by somebody astonishingly good. Uh, and I was like, there, well, how are we gonna top that? And somehow, um, we were able to not only bring back that brilliant first cast, but add an enormous uh, new cast that is just as tremendous. So you have Leslie Jones, obviously, playing uh, our new common enemy, Zeta. You have Sterling K. Brown, who's playing an assistant to Leonard, uh, cut from the same cloth as an Elon Musk. Uh, of course, you have Rachel Bloom playing my sister, Silver. 
you have Aquafina. I mean, it's just like, it, it, it doesn't end. Uh, Brooklyn Prince from the Florida Project is in it. it. And each one of these characters is just as distinct and just as wonderfully original as our returning characters and adds a new dynamic to it that again makes it feel fresh and unbelievably entertaining. It took the idea and the premise of the game and just subverted all of it and, and exploited our references to that game, but built a, an entirely new world that was so unique and wonderful. But now with the sequel, we have an opportunity because we don't have to go back and explain the world. We don't have to explain the rules. So you can expand upon the language and the understanding and the relationship that we have with these characters and go to entirely new places without laying the groundwork. Uh, and I think in that sense, it's really freed us up to have even more fun.